Russian army attacks Ukrainian positions more often with motorcycles due to lack of heavy equipment. After losing nearly 15,000 combat vehicles in the first two years of its wider war on Ukraine, Russia got desperate. Production of new vehicles combined with the restoration of old vehicles from long-term storage couldn't keep pace with the monthly loss of more than 600 tanks, infantry fighting vehicles and armored personnel carriers. That's why, in the early months of the third year of the wider war, more Russian troops have been riding into battle on motorcycles. The Ministry of Defense of Russia also admits this. The Battle Group East has started to use cross-country motorcycles to capture Ukrainian strong points, the Russian Defense Ministry said. Assault units from the Battle Group effectively use off-road bikes to seize Ukrainian positions near Ugldar, according to the Ministry. The motorcycle is already almost standard equipment there. Such a small and extremely maneuverable target, unlike heavy equipment, is very hard to hit. The fighters roll into Ukrainian trenches at speed and immediately engage in combat, while our drone's operators guide them from the air, the ministry said. Assault groups have also taken to rehearsing future attacks at precise copies of Ukrainian strongpoints, which are built in Russian rear areas. According to assault stormtroopers, when going into the trenches, is now, they know exactly where the enemy is with its machine guns and foxholes, the ministry said. The assault platoon commander said troops collaborate with drones to plot their route with kamikaze drones and artillery and mortar units. The Ukraine war has evolved into a conflict in which any movement is determined by the massive presence of frontline explosive and surveillance drones. More and more vehicles are coming into action to the detriment of the slower, more identifiable armoured infantry carriers. The problem for Russian troops in 2024 is that, running low on purpose-built armoured vehicles as well as larger civilian-style vehicles, they're riding their unprotected bikes directly at Ukrainian positions. Despite the losses, at least one Russian unit still vouches for motorcycles as assault vehicles. U.S. will burn in an earthly fire following a missile attack on Sevastopol. Medvedev Former Russian President Dmitry Medvedev warned that the United States will burn in an earthly fire following a missile attack on Sevastopol by Ukrainian troops. Newsweek recalls amid the ongoing Russia-Ukraine war, the Kremlin had placed blame on the U.S. for a Ukrainian attack on the Russian annexed Crimean Peninsula, claiming U.S.-supplied missiles were used. The Russian Defense Ministry said four of the U.S.-delivered ATA-CMS missiles were shot down by air defense systems, but fragments from the fifth rocket led to casualties on the ground. Responsibility for the deliberate missile attack on the civilians of Sevastopol is borne above all by Washington, which supplied these weapons to Ukraine, and by the Kyiv regime from whose territory this strike was carried out. The ministry said. Medvedev, deputy chairman of the Security Council of Russia and close ally to Russian President Vladimir Putin, took to Telegram to respond to the attack. The bastards from the USA supply missiles with cluster charges to Bandera's supporters and help guide them to the target. The bastards in Kyiv select a beach with peaceful people as a target and press the button. Both will burn in hell. I hope even earlier in earthly fire. Medvedev wrote, according to the translated post, Medvedev continued to condemn the attack as he claimed it was carried out by extremists. Everything that happened was not military action, but a vile and vile terrorist attack against our people committed on an orthodox holiday, just like the massacre in Degestan, which was carried out by extremists. Therefore, now all of them, the American authorities, the Bandera regime and crazy fanatics, are no different from us. My deepest condolences to the families of the victims. Speedy recovery to the wounded, he added. Stepan Bandera was the leader of the Organization of Ukrainian Nationalists during World War II. He is a divisive figure, with many in Western Ukraine seeing him as a freedom fighter against Soviet Union domination. Pro-Russian separatists in Eastern Ukraine think of him as a fascist ally to Nazi Germany head Adolf Hitler. Iran is expected to start war against Israel. Threat increases to U.S. military forces in the region. Israeli military advance into Lebanon threatens a response from Iran, which could come to the defense of Hezbollah, triggering an escalation of the war that could jeopardize U.S. forces in the region, states Air Force General Charles Brown, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. 
The general stated that Iran supports Hamas but would provide greater support to Hezbollah, especially if they feel that Hezbollah is under serious threat. Brown spoke to reporters during a trip to Botswana for a meeting of defense ministers from African countries. Since the start of the war in the Gaza Strip, rocket attacks on Israeli territory by Hezbollah, recognized as a terrorist organization by the governments of several countries, including the European Union, have increased. In response, Israel has been striking Hezbollah targets in Lebanon. On June the 11th, Israeli aircraft launched another strike. Over a few days, Hezbollah fired more than 100 rockets into Israeli territory. On June the 21st to the 22nd, Israeli aviation struck targets belonging to the organization in four areas in southern Lebanon. Israeli officials have threatened a military offensive in Lebanon if negotiations to push Hezbollah away from the border do not yield results. Just a few days ago, the Israeli army announced that it had approved a plan to advance into Lebanon, although the U.S. is trying to prevent cross border attacks from escalating into a full-scale war. U.S. officials are trying to find a diplomatic solution to the conflict. It is expected that this issue will be raised this week at a meeting between Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant and U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin in Washington. According to CNN, senior U.S. officials have assured Israel of their support in the event of a full-scale war with Hezbollah. At the same time, U.S. President Joe Biden's senior advisor, Amos Hochstein, stated in Beirut on Tuesday that the U.S. is unlikely to be able to help Israel defend itself in a broader war with Hezbollah, just as they helped Israel repel the Iranian missile and drone onslaught in April. He said it is harder to defend against shorter-range rockets that Hezbollah regularly launches across the border into Israel.